it had a unique feeling where it felt it was radiating anabolism. Now, ever since then, I stopped the YK11 and the Follistatin 344, and that unique feeling that I got potentially from Follistatin has completely gone away. I will say that after the fourth week or so of being on YK11 consistently, the muscle starts to develop some sort of unique feeling. And for the better lack of explanation, it just felt anabolic. Like wants to go to the gym and train and lift heavy weights and utilize all the food that I was giving it and all of the drugs I was supplementing alongside the YK11. It had a unique feeling where it felt it was radiating anabolism. I administered one milligram of Folistatin 344 bilaterally, intramuscularly into the upper quads, so that's 500 micrograms left and right. And that gave me the exact same unique feeling that I get from YK11 after the four, fourth week mark, which seemed to steadily increase by week seven. I stopped YK11 at week seven. A couple of days later, I administered Folistatin 344, one milligram in total. And that gave me the exact same feeling, but to a much greater extent. Now, ever since then, I stopped the YK11 and the Folistatin 344. And that unique feeling that I got potentially from Folistatin has completely gone away. I'm cruising on about 500 milligrams of testosterone per week now. And it also brings me to another point. Anecdotally, YK11 might act as an aromatase inhibitor. Again, how much of this is coming from um, having bottomed out testosterone, preventing the conversion from testosterone into estradiol or simply being estrogen deficient because there's no testosterone base. Anecdotally, which I certainly have or had at that time, I would expect my serum estradiol levels to be higher when I was running testosterone, nandrolone, trestolone, and then androl, which doesn't convert, but might interact with the estrogen receptor. From this stack of three compounds, which are known to aromatase, I would expect higher estrogen levels while I was using YK11. And now that I stopped the YK11, I was running 500 tests with 500 nandrolone and 150 mint at that time. My serum estradiol levels ended up around 100, 110 picograms per milliliter. And now that I'm running 500 tests without the YK11, serum estradiol is 130. It's higher, but I'm using less aromatizing compounds. So take from that what you will. Again, it's not really hard scientific evidence, anecdotal reports, and before and after blood work results with so many compounds in the picture. But it might mean that YK11 does have some aromatase inhibiting effects, which we'll investigate the next time I use injectable YK11. Now, again, we already discussed the poor oral bioavailability because YK11 is not 17 alpha alkylated. Um, how much of the poor oral availability is assessed from that, or because some sources might uh, go from very potent YK11 dosed at 10 milligrams per capsule as labeled at 10 milligrams per capsule to 5 milligrams or switching that for Winstrol or nothing entirely, right? That happens. The gray area websites that sell SARMs are not very well regulated. So make sure you get your YK11 from a reputable source and then take that sublingually like I did or otherwise go with injectable YK11, which from what I understand doesn't require propylene glycol or polyethylene glycol or another synthetic carrier oil that it's highly inflammatory for your body if you don't know what i'm talking about watch this video where i discuss carrier oils into great detail injectable yk11 can apparently be brewed in mct oil with a little bit of benzo benzoate and benzo alcohol unless you're allergic for benzo benzoate or benzo alcohol obviously don't take that so for now i'm pretty bullish on this compound but i would like to do a little bit more experimentation and comparing the different administration routes to come with a final conclusion and that brings us to the dosing protocol. For men, I would say that the sustainable and tolerable dose is 5 milligrams to 50 milligrams orally, preferably taken sublingually morning and evening, or taking 5 milligrams to 50 milligrams bilaterally, intramuscularly, 30 minutes pre-workout, because again, the statin increase seems to be a localized effect, so might as well take that pre-workout. When I took uh, YK11 orally, sublingually, pre-workout, I didn't notice a dramatic difference. There seems to be no non-genomic effects like you get with Anadrol, Superdrol, Anivar, where you get an immediate result during the workout. I did not notice that from YK11, so I would recommend that if you take it orally or sublingually, to just split it morning and evening for a total dose between 10 milligrams to 30 milligrams daily. And when it comes to the deleterious dose, I would say that that's over 30 milligrams orally or intramuscularly daily simply because the anecdotal reports and my personal anecdotal um, experience didn't really go over 
30 milligrams daily. And if you want to go with the scientific evidence, that would be over, let's say, 57 milligrams per one kilogram of body weight orally, daily split out over three administrations. But that's highly dubiously extrapolated from animal models. So I would not put too much weight into that. And when it comes to women, I would say that, uh, well, it's not recommended because it's an oral steroid. And I couldn't really find any anecdotal reports of women using YK11 and walking away with a good experience without virilization. So I would limit it to Anivar instead. And it brings us to the evidence-based detection time in human urine. Not much to work with. There's a single study that shows that YK11 in a single five milligram dose taken orally was detectable over 48 hours because the urine samples weren't taken after 48 hours. And the half-life is unknown, it might be over 10 hours, which is a suspected half-life. And that's basically all we have to work with from a scientific perspective. There's a study that detected the presence of 11 YK11 metabolites in horse urine after a single administration of 50 milligrams YK11 orally. But the researchers didn't do an excretion study to see how long these 11 metabolites were detectable and how much that would translate from horse urine to human urine. I'm not entirely sure. And there's a few liquid chromatography studies to detect the presence of YK11 in dietary supplements. And there you see that um, a lot of the supplements that market YK11 as SARMs don't actually contain YK11 at all. Right? So caution is advised, make sure you stick to reputable sources. And there might be a recent 2024 study that detected the presence of YK11 or its metabolites in a human subject, but the full publication is behind the paywall. You can uh, purchase it yourself uh, with the citations down below in case you're interested. Performed by Soboleski et al., which actually does a lot of excretion studies of anabolic androgenic steroids and other performance enhancing drugs. Published on June 2024, titled Detection of Selective Androgen Receptor Modulator YK11 in a Doping Control sample link down below in case you're interested as far as i know there's no reported detection time in human urine for yk11 it's probably along the lines of three weeks similar to uh, traditional anabolic androgenic steroids that are not metabolism resistant or not oral steroids that are otherwise injected like injectable winstrol is very long detection time compared to oral winstrol so might be the same case here if you inject YK11, the detection time is much longer because injectable YK11 remains in the injection depot, whereas oral or sublingual YK11 is metabolized quite rapidly because it's not 17 alpha alkylated. I have no idea, so I wouldn't bet my house on this three week potential reported detection time. If you're subject to drug testing, just stick to something that we know the detection time of from a scientific perspective and the reported detection time so you can pass the doping test or don't use anything at all. all right that's also a possibility maybe actually play by the rules for a change okay so the follow-up experiment that i'm going to run oral yk11 taken sublingually at 30 milligrams daily alongside a testosterone base blood work before during and after to see if yk11 has an aromatized inhibiting effect run that for about three to four weeks um, do blood work before I switch to injectable YK11 at the exact same dose, split um, into 50 milligrams injections bilaterally pre-workout. And otherwise, I take it uh, subcutaneously on rest days to kind of extend the half-life because the half-life is currently unknown. And then finish that off after three or four weeks of that protocol with blood work, then switching to injectable folostatin 344 at one milligram daily. Yes. That will give me some serious gains and serious contractile capacity and hopefully uh, mutate my physique to the next level. Anyway, stay tuned. That might be uh, coming up in the next couple of months. In the meantime, I'm just going to cruise, relax, and kind of detoxify, take care of my gynecomastia surgery, which is coming up. And then once I'm ready to hit the ground running, we're going to um, do a little bit of a folostatin experiment. For now, I would like you to look into YK11 and consider it a folostatin Secretagogue. In the meantime, I would love to hear your personal anecdotal experience with YK11. Did you use it with the testosterone base? What were your results before, during, and after? Did you do blood work? What dramatic changes did you see in your blood work? Did you notice any comparable effect to injectable folostatin if you've used that in the past, right? Let us know down below in the comment section. I would love to hear about it, and I'm sure everybody else in the Vigorous Crew community would love to hear about it. 
Make sure you do your blood work over at Merrick Health if you live in the United States or another uh, blood work place if you live somewhere else. Right? Blood work is very important. I do it all the time. I report my blood work here on YouTube, even though I don't do it. In Merrick Health, I still have a discount code for a full male lab panel and a discounted budgeted male lab panel with the links down below. If you want to take your workouts to the next level, look no further than Gorilla Mind Supplements or Intelligent Shop for all those cosmetic things that might be applicable for you if you're a male. I herb with the best uh, over-the-counter supplements you can find on the planet besides Gorilla Mind for less of a discount, but a discount nonetheless. Those codes are all down below. And if you can't find anything specific, you might be able to find it on my website, vigorsteve.com. Consultations are always available. We can either schedule a call or handle it by email. Those rates you can find down below as well. And I even have a 10 hour consultation package if you want to lock in a fat discount to be in touch with me continuously. All right, I'll leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A anabolic, slightly enhanced YK11 frontal bicep for you guys. I'm about 110 kilos now, but I ended up at 120 kilos on YK11, which is, well, pretty dramatic. But again, I was running testosterone, nandrolone, trestolone, anadrol, growth hormone, IGF-1, and, well, some injectable pre-workouts to take those workouts to the next level. So how much of that was from the YK-11 or the copious amounts of food that I was eating? I'm not entirely sure, so it warrants another experiment. Another frontal bicep for you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.